In the last video, we reviewed some of the functions and the benefits that you use, that you gain by using Figma. Now, what we want to talk about is how do we get from the Figma document, which has things uh, in relative position and we can see what the appearance is, how do we get that into something that we can make as a, web, as a website? And that requires us to do two things. One is we have to write web code. So let me come over here. So the one thing we have to do is we have to write HTML code. And that code, the purpose of HTML code, is to define what the items are on the page. So I'm going back to Figma. So what are the items on the page? Well, in the center here, I have a big, a big um, section, which will probably become what's called a division. At the top, I have the header. Inside of the header, I have my name, and over here, I have the navigation bar. Here I have a page name, here are a couple of paragraphs, and here's an image. So what I have to do is I have to say in HTML what these items are. In another document, or another part of the document, I say, what do these items look like? So it's a two-part it's a two-part thing. What it is and what it looks like. Let me show you some actual websites to give you an idea. Here's ESPN. So this is the completed website. It is the HTML, which describes what items are on the page, and the CSS cascading style sheet that displays how it looks. I have the web developers uh, uh, add-on here and I'm going to disable the CSS styles and you can see what this looks like just with HTML. Okay, so this is the this is ESPN's website with the styles turned off. And it looks like ESPN uses an awful lot of bullet lists in their pro in their protocol. And there's nothing special about the way this looks. It's just very, very, very basic. Let's look at another one here. Here's Victoria's Secret site. Let me turn off the styles for that and let's see what that looks like. Well, uh, that's not any more exciting, is it? And they use a lot of bullet lists here with some graphics. Some big graphics, actually. These probably uh, get uh, shrunk down and they become little icons. There's a big X, so there's nothing here but bullet lists and information. So let's look at some of the types of things that you can describe with HTML. And the HTML protocol gives us several things we can use. I call this a demo of useful tags. So a tag is this, like this H1 is a tag. Some people will call it an element. So it's I use that interchangeably, a tag or an element. Here's an H1 for header 1. And headers go from H1 to 6. H1 is the biggest, H6 is the smallest. Here's one called header. Very useful. Here's one called nav. We have another one called section. Here's one called aside. Here's one called footer. Here's an article, here's one called a division, and here's a paragraph. Now when you look at these in code, they're not going to look very special. Let me go to that page, close out Victoria's Secret. So here's the page I just looked at. Header, navbar, section, aside, footer, article, division, paragraph. Now the browser does put some default style in for the paragraph, but none of these are styled. But the names of the uh, HTML elements let you then apply styles to them and uh, it lets you a, it gives you a way to select the content on your page. So what you do is you go to your Figma page and you say, okay, this top white bar will be the header then you can style that to look like the header. And inside of the header, you might be able to put your nav bar. Let's take a look at this. So 
the so this is this is all HTML, HTML code. This is what the what what gets described. This is what it is. Okay. Now, what it looks like is done in one of three places. You can add the style right here within the within the uh, web within the code. So you could say uh, background color green. And that will do it. You can put the style there. You can put the style inside of a style tag, which is located inside of the head of the do document. Here's the head of the document. So I could say header. And you put a left curly brace, which is next to the uh, letter P. And then you just say background color. and you add a colon and then you can put green and then you put a semicolon and that says that's the end of the statement or you can do the same thing you can take the same code and actually put it in a separate document and uh, and then uh, attach the document to the HTML this is a style sheet this is a style tag and the one I did here was an inline style that's the three ways you can apply styles. Let's take a look at this and see what happens if we turn the uh, header green. So we have. So background color green changed the header. The types of things you can do with the style are you can change color, which changes the text color. So I'll change the text color. That worked pretty well. You can change the font size font size I go to uh, 30 pixels save that you can change the uh, text indent let's see here let's look at text text indent 30 pixels so I'll push the text over to the left 30 pixels there we go you can change the space around the edge of the content so I'm going to say margin uh, I'm sorry padding on the top padding top this will give us a little space on the top 20 pixels padding on the bottom I'll do 20 pixels now the things that I'm typing here are some of the very same things that you get on Figma when you look over on the code side and that's the benefit of using Figma because you can get some of the exact values from the from the prototype uh, that you make in Figma and those will translate right into the cascading style sheets or CSS that you need for your project. 